The history of Middle-earth consists of different ages. The events depicted in The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, which most of us are familiar with, took place at the end of the Third Age of the Sun, or simply the Third Age. However, the War of the Ring makes up only a very small part of Middle-earth's history. This is because Middle-earth, or rather the world named Arda of which Middle-earth is a part, appeared a very long time ago. Hello friends, welcome to Middle-earth. I'm your guide, Dragon. Today, I'll tell you the history of Middle-earth from beginning to end. The primordial age without time has no name, but it may be appropriate to call it creation, or music of the Einar although it is not an age we perceive. The age that followed is called the Age of Lamps. The Age of Trees followed, but while the Age of Trees were happening in one part of Arda, the Age of Stars were happening in Middle-earth. Finally, the Ages of the Sun began, and they are referred to as the First Age, the Second Age, the Third Age, and the Fourth Age. If you pay attention, you'll notice that all ages, except for the Age of Creation, are related to how Arda was illuminated. The Age of Trees should not confuse you, because, although they are slightly different, they are also a form of illumination. So, when one light disappears, another one appears, and a new age begins. Let's go back to the Age of Creation, or, to give it a better name, the music of the Einar. You may not have come across the names Iluvatar or Eru while reading The Lord of the Rings, because this name is first mentioned in the Silmarillion, which came out long after the trilogy. Iluvatar is the entity that created everything. First, Eru created entities called Einar, and they made music together called the Great Music. Each Einar contributed to this music according to the power given to them by Eru. And when the music ended, the world named Arda appeared in the void. Because the great music was in the timeless halls, the concept of time had not yet emerged. Therefore, we do not know how long the music lasted. However, this world was not fully developed. To prepare the world for the elves and men, called Eru's children, some Einir came to the surface of the world. Fifteen of them were more powerful than the others and they were called Valar. The weaker entities were called Maiar, and they were assistants to the Valar. As their first task, the Valar placed two great towers at the north and south of the world, each with a powerful source of light on top. Thus, the Age of Lamps began. During this age, the Valar organized the world's mountains, valleys, oceans, and natural life. The world was now ready for the development of the children, However, one of the Valar, named Melkor, hated what the others had done, and wanted the world to be as he desired, and destroyed the two great lamps, leaving the world in darkness, and causing the collapse of the massive lamps, which changed the face of the earth. After the destruction of the lamps, Valar strives to prevent further damage to the world, and then travel to Amon, located in the west of Middle-earth. This place is also known as the Undying Lands and Valinor. Two great trees are grown from the ground here. One of the trees radiates golden light, while the other gives off silver light. Thus, a day and night cycle is established. However, the great trees only illuminate Valinor, while Middle-earth in the east is in darkness. Therefore, the Valar Varda places stars in the sky. Thus, while the Age of Trees are experienced in Valinor, the Age of the Stars are experienced in Middle-earth. With the formation of the stars, the first elves awaken according to Eru's plan. After their awakening, the dwarves awaken in their stone halls, and the Ents awaken in the forest. Although the Vala Owl made the dwarves and the Vala Yavanna made the Ents, it is still Eru who gives them consciousness and life. After some time, the Valar realize that the elves have awakened and do not want to leave them at the mercy of Melkor, who has already noticed the elves and created his own twisted or grace from them. A great war breaks out among the Valar. Melkor is captured, 
brought to Valinor and imprisoned. The elves are invited by the Valar to live under the light of the great trees in Valinor, and most of them accept. During Melkor's imprisonment, the elves flourished in Valinor. Among the Noldor elves, Feanor crafted three jewels named Silmarils that contained the light of the two great trees. However, there is tension between the stepchildren as Feanor's father, the king of Noldor, married twice, contrary to the custom of elves. After centuries, Melkor's captivity came to an end, and he noticed the unrest within the Noldor royal family, sowing seeds of discord and eventually leading to drawn swords. However, Melkor's plan was not just to create dissension among the elves. He killed the Noldor king, Finwë, stole the Silmarils, and convinced the great spider Ungoliant, who lived in the darkness in the south of Amman, to destroy the two trees. Thus, the Age of Trees came to an end. The world was once again deprived of light, but the Valar undertook the monumental task to ensure that it would never be destroyed again. They created the sun and the moon, from the last fruits of the two trees, ushering in the Ages of the Sun. The first Age of the Sun is marked by the struggle between Melkor, who fled his fortress in Angband, and the Noldor Elves seeking revenge. With the rising of the sun, humans also wake, but being naturally indecisive, some join the Elves in the fight against Melkor, now known as Morgoth, the dark enemy of the world while others side with him. Throughout the First Age, there are many battles, but the most important are the six wars fought between the Elves and Melkor, known as the War of the Jewels or the Beleriand Wars. At first, the Elves gain the upper hand, and Angband is besieged. However, Melkor launches a counterattack that breaks the siege. For a while, the struggle is even, but in the fifth battle, the unnumbered tears, the elves, and their human allies suffer a great defeat, and Melkor begins to conquer Beleriand in the western part of Middle-earth. In the sixth battle, the War of Wrath, everything is turned around, as the Valar, who had decided not to interfere due to the Noldor's departure from Valinor, change their mind and join the war. Melkor is captured again, but this time he's imprisoned beyond the world, and Beleriand is submerged during the war, marking the end of the First Age of the Sun. The peace of the Second Age of the Sun begins with the defeat of Morgoth, the dark enemy of the world. However, most of the elves have already been slaughtered in wars, or have returned to Valinor. The Second Age is mostly the Age of Human Dominance. For the humans who fought against Melkor, Eru bestowed an island called Numenor, where the inhabitants lived longer than other humans. While the people of Numenor were living on their island, Sauron, Melkor's right-hand man, came to the elves by presenting himself as an envoy sent from Valinor, and together with the elven smiths, they made the Rings of Power. However, Sauron's purpose is to control those who wear these rings, with the one ring he made himself. But when he wears the One Ring, his real identity is sensed by the Elves, and thus, war breaks out between the Elves and Sauron. Sauron's army quickly gains control, and his ultimate victory is not far off. But the people of Numenor come to help, and Sauron is defeated and retreats to Mordor. Meanwhile, over the thousands of years that have passed, Numenor has forgotten its roots, and despite all their power, they begun to question why they're not immortal like the Elves, and ultimately have turned their backs on both the Elves and the Valar. Just like his master Melkor, Sauron notices this weakness in his enemy, and allows himself to be taken to Numenor as a prisoner. He quickly becomes the king's advisor from captivity, and Numenor embarks on a great campaign against Valinor. This rebellion results in the sinking of Numenor by Eru, Everyone dies, except for those among the Numenorians who still remain loyal to the Valar. These faithful ones come to Middle-earth and establish the kingdoms of Gondor and Arnor. However, Sauron survives the island sinking, and eventually, these two powers face each other once again. 
On one side is Sauron, and on the other side is the last alliance army of elves and humans. Sauron is defeated, the One Ring is taken from him, and thus, the Second Age of the Sun comes to an end. Most of the Third Age is spent with Sauron regaining his strength and returning to a physical form. Therefore, the struggle is mostly between his commanders and army against humans, as the elves and dwarves are now even fewer in number compared to the previous age. Sauron's commander, the Witch King, leads the fight, and first ensures the fall of Arnor, and then makes efforts to weaken Gondor. Meanwhile, the wizards known as Istari, who come from Valinor, also join the struggle. Finally, an unexpected development occurs when Sauron returns to Mordor. The One Ring, which was lost at the beginning of the Third Age, is found, and thus begins the period known as the War of the Ring. This time, there is no help coming to Middle-earth from the outside, and the people's fight against Sauron is their own. Ultimately, the One Ring is destroyed, and Sauron is permanently defeated. This marks the end of the Third Age. Unfortunately, what we know about the Fourth Age is limited to just a few sentences. However, we can say that with the Fourth Age, human rule definitively begins. As time passes, the others either migrated or their numbers decreased significantly. <laughs>